week, and I took and read those first seven verses, how we were just reading to let you know that there was something in there. We want you to know that there's, even through all of those names and all of those places, there was something in there. And the average preacher can really read those names. I kind of fake it, and I try to run by it until you can, uh, to, until you can uh, sound it out. And that way you can't tell if I did it wrong because you got another name in your head before you get that one sounded out. But tonight, with all of these names, because once again, I'm going to read one verse. I'm going to read the first verse. And uh, Joshua chapter 13, I sure hope that you, you, you'll get it here. Joshua 13, verse 1. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. There remains yet very much land to be possessed. Let me read that verse again. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. And there remains yet very much land to be possessed. Can I read it one more time? Amen. Now Tony was old. <laughs> and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, that's Tony, that thou art old, Tony, <laughs> and stricken in years. And there remained yet very much land to be possessed. Let me put it this way here. If, you, if you're, you're over 50, God would say, I'm talking to you. You say, preacher, 50, that's not old. Well, ask some of these teenagers. They'll tell you, say, boy, you old. I don't know why they treat us that way, but that's, that's kind of what they, what they say to us. You are old. You are old. But let me, let me do it this way. I said I was going to read just one verse, but I think I better go down to verse number, uh, how about verse number uh, uh, 15? Verse number 15. So the Bible says in verse number 15, you there? Say amen. amen. Um, verse 15, the Bible says now, uh, and Moses gave unto the tribe of the children of Reuben uh, uh, inheritance according to their families. Now, if you remember, I told you about this guy, Moses. Moses was the guy who could not uh, come into the promised land. Remember I told you, you can forfeit the promised land. But I want you to get this now. God used Moses to still, still distribute part of the land. Now, we know that it was not on the side God really wanted him to be on, but, but God still used him to get to this place in life. And God said, uh, hey, Moses, uh, I'm still going to use you. Aren't you glad for that? You say, preacher, who, who is that? Uh, well, let me put it this way. Even though Moses also got to be, you know, pretty old, 120 years old, but God still used him even though he was disobedient. Watch this now. You with me? It's not, I'll say old, but like a teenager, just hard-headed. Are you, are you following me now? God said, let me, let me put, can I put it this way? And Madison gave unto the tribes of the children of Reubenite inheritance according to their families. You know what he just said? God says, hard-headed, stubborn Madison, I still used to do a work for the children of Israel. You say, preacher, why are you saying this? Because here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get every one of us to look at these verses and ask ourselves, could God be talking to me? Could God be sharing something? Wait a minute. I said I was going to read one verse and I read two. How about if I read a third one? Would that be okay? Look at verse number 22. And Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer did the children of Israel uh, slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. Hold on. Wait a minute. Brother Cody, did we, did we see that? This is Balaam, the one who the Bible said was slain. In, in, in other words, he got killed. Now, now please understand. He was the one that was, that, that was asked by Barak to, to, to curse the children of Israel. But instead of cursing them, he, was, um, he, he, he said, I can't do nothing but say what God told me to do. Amen. I want you to get this guy now because this might, he might relate to some of us. And God used him to help bless the children of Israel instead of curse the children of Israel. But this guy was a compromiser and one who was covetous. And God still used him. 
God is, God is trying to get all of us to, in the, and, and by the way, can I help you? Can I help you a little bit here? There's some of us who will say in our, in our life, well, I know God, it, it, he ain't talking about me, that old preacher, because I ain't old. And I know he's not talking to me because truth is, I've been, I've been obeying God. And I, he definitely can't be talking to me because I, I haven't compromised on my principles and I've been living for God the way I should. Man, I wish I had enough time to find another one to talk about you, but I'll just talk about you like over in the New Testament. I'm glad I'm not like him. That's what some of us say. Oh, and by the way, that guy that said, I'm, like, I'm glad I'm not like him, when God gave us that story, you don't see anything else about him. Because God lets us know that these six things that the Lord hates and seven are abomination. He said one of them is pride. Pride go before destruction. The Holy Spirit before fall. So God has said, okay, you, you and I want to say, well, I'm not like that. When God says, uh, you're probably one of the ones I can't use anyway. But who, who did I use? I used an old man named Tony. I used a young lady, disobedient, named Madison. And I, I, used, I, used, I used a guy, we, we call him Pastor Rob, who, who, who sometimes compromised in, in his younger life and, and somebody sometimes was covetous and wasn't looking after the things of God. And I still used him. Amen. And God is saying, get us, listen, I know that we've been going throughout these here lessons and stuff, and sometimes you probably hate it. Oh, man, how's he going to beat us up today? I hope you don't get beat up today. I hope you leave here rejoicing, knowing this here. I know who I am, and I know God wants to still use me. Amen. I know where I've been. I know what I've done. I know how I've acted. I know how I've responded. I know the things I've said. But there's still a God in heaven who will say, I'll use you if you'll let me. And I'll use you even when the truth of the matter is here. You're trying to get ahead. So, so, so I, I hope to help somebody today. The, the subject tonight is this here. God's not finished with you. God's not finished with you. Sometimes we wonder, God, is, is it over with? And I was wondering that thing at age 25. I told my wife, I said, God don't want me anymore. Then at age 28, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. And I found in him a resting place. Hey, I'm telling you something. God still wants to use people. Amen. Amen. And God, I surrendered at that age finally. Even when I know at 14 and what I was supposed to be doing, I wasn't doing it. But at 28, God still gave me opportunity. Now, what about those wasted years? They were wasted. They were empty. They didn't amount to anything for all eternity. But I'm so glad that since that day, since that age, I was talking to a man today. And he was saying, man, how long you been doing what you're doing? And I said, 32 years. He said, wow, that's a long time. It should have been longer. But I thank God for how long it's been. Amen. Hey, God said to me one day, I'm not through with you. Amen. I'm not finished with you. I still got a job for you to do. But I hope you leave here thankful that God still will use, get this, folks like us. Father, thank you so much for this great truth tonight. And, uh, Lord, I know that we didn't pray for all those unspoken requests, but you know what they are. You know who they are. You know what they're going to. And maybe they're God. They may be even asking this question, will God use me? I hope when I get done here tonight that they'll say, well, God's not finished with me yet. I know what I've been. I know what I've done. And I know I haven't, I haven't made God proud of me. But, dear God, if you'll give me another chance, I'll take it and I'll use it for your glory. Bless us now, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth, and Jupiter and Mars, but how loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. It really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge him yet. There's an unfinished part, but I'll be better just according to his plan. Fashioned by the master's loving hand. In the mirror of his words, reflections that I see make me wonder why he never uh, gave up on me. But he loves me as I am and helps me when I pray. Remember, he's the potter and I'm just the clay. Oh, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. 
as a song out there, and uh, I know we don't sing it, but I just thought those lyrics right there would just help us to understand that God still, if you'll let him, if you'll let him, he'll still make you what he wants you to be. You and I may not be all that we should be. I heard the old preacher say, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen. We not be all what we should be, but I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Things have changed in my life since I finally got right with God. And things are getting better in my life since I finally surrendered to God. He's still working on me. Somebody say amen. amen. Write it down. Philippians chapter 1. I got to get this done so I can still, well, I still got a little bit of uh, energy in me right now because I just feel so overwhelmed. Philippians 1 verse number 6. Being confident in this very thing. That he which had begun a good work in you will perform it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, work, what work did he start? He started the work of salvation. The work of salvation, he started on me. That's where he started working in my life and, and started changing me. And along the way, the next thing that he's done is what we call sanctification. I mean, he started taking and making me everything that I'm supposed to be holy and pure and right with him. But you know what? He's not even done when, 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 we, when he's doing sanctification. Because there's a final stage called glorification. Somebody say amen. Salvation through sanctification and then all of a sudden glorification. That's the day of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that God is still working on us? In other words, Chandler, God's not finished with you. Amen. He's not finished with me. He's not finished with any of us if we'll let him keep on working on us. He worked with an old man. He worked with a disobedient man. He worked with a man that wasn't considering the things of God, but considered himself more than above what God wanted for his life. But aren't you glad that God can use anybody? If he used a donkey, he can use me. Amen. God is trying to teach us something today. What, write this down if you don't mind. A few things real quickly. In life of Joshua, we can see that God's not finished with him, even when he had simply grown aged. He just simply, in other words, you say, preacher, what do you mean he just simply grown, uh, grown age? Time caught up to him. I said time caught up to him. He, he had arthritis, bursitis, gingivitis, and all the other itis. And God still wanted to use him. Is there anybody in here that sometime you wake up and you start saying, oh, but earlier you never said, oh, that's why God said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. In other words, God said, give it all you got while you can because the day is coming where you're going to say, boy, I wish I had what I used to have. But you want to know something here? I want to say, it, brother Tony, I know I was teasing, but God said, I ain't through with you yet. I'm not finished with your life. Long as you got breath in your body, long as you're on the north side of the dirt, you're not looking up toward the sky from underneath. God said, I'm still working on you and with you. God is saying, I need you to get this now. Matter of fact, write it down if you don't mind. Just so you can get it number, under number one. You still with me? He's simply grown aged. Again, and don't forget, next to verse number one, put down Tony Cruz. You got to have an illustration. <laughs> you said, I thought his name was Joshua. Yeah, I, can't, I, I couldn't read it at first, so I just said Tony Cruz. And I hope you don't take get offended by me because I don't mean anything about it. I'm just, listen, I'm just trying. Oh, God, thank you so much. God said, I want you to understand something here. I know what I see. What do you mean, preacher? God look at Joshua and God said, hey, Joshua, you old, you stricken in years. And he said it to him, let us say it again so we can understand. God said, you old, you stricken in years. He said, but there still remaineth yet very much land. To possess. We got, we, just, we, know we got through 31 kings, God said, but we still got some more to do. Amen. We still got some more work we need to get done. Yep. And here's what God is saying. I know who I'm talking to because I know who I'm looking at. Let me tell you, I know what I see, but you don't see what I see. You see an old man. You see somebody stricken again with arthritis and all the other. You see somebody who you would say, man, there ain't nothing else they can do. But God said, hey, I see somebody who can do something else if they'll decide to just give me all. Amen. God is trying to let you know there, Brother Larry. He's still got work for you. 
I know you probably feel like maybe sometimes, you know, I just don't, I'm not able or capable of anything like that. But God is saying, I want you to understand something here. I see your age. I see your pain. I see your difficulties. But I see somebody who will get something done for me when others won't. Can I help you older people here to understand something? God needs us. Because he see, write this down under this, what God see. He see faithful and fervent people. Amen. Scott and Miss Danny, let me tell you what happened. I don't know how old Joshua really was. But I know the Bible said that when Caleb, the one who got into the land, it said he was 85 years old. And he said, I'm just as strong now as I was when I first, come on, somebody. I'm 85 years old. But let me tell you something. I want that mountain. <laughs> let me have that mountain. God said, let me tell you what I see. I see a faithful and I see a fervent child of God willing to do something. So here's what I'm telling you. If you haven't given up on yourself, God hasn't given up on you. If you haven't stopped, if you, if you stop saying, I'm too old, God is saying, I'll use you even though you are old. God said, I ain't fooling. I know what I see. What you see, God? I see somebody who's failing. I see somebody with some flaws. I see somebody who's frail. I see somebody whose flesh is just being all eaten up. And I see somebody who most people say, there's no future left. But hey, Joshua, I got some more land. Would you help me get it? I got some more land, Joshua. Would you help me get it? And I want you to get this now, not only under this here about Joshua, what God saw, but notice what God said. What did God say? God said after he told him, he said, you old, stricken in years. You say, preacher, why do you think God said that to him so he wouldn't get the big head? If he got the big head, he's about saying, well, God couldn't get anything done without me. So God told him, he said, you old? <laughs> And you stricken in years, but I still got some land. So what did God say? There remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Now notice this here. It's not about just what God said. You with me? But it's that God said it. Have you ever gone up to somebody and you get ready to say something and you start saying, nah, I better keep my mouth shut. Nah, but not say. Listen, I might. I, I, listen, I know. I know they want to, but but they, I, I know they can't. I know they volunteer, but I know they can't. Here's the thing: is God says, I'm gonna say it. What you gonna say, God? I still got some more work for you to do. It's not just what God said, but it's that God said it to Joshua. The old man, the, 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 the aching man, the, the, the one who had gone through so much. And again, I don't know how old he was, but I do know one thing. He, he, it's just him and Caleb that came out of Egypt. And they went through that place 40 years in the wilderness. Are you still with me? And like I say, when, when, when Caleb finally got over that number, he said, let's go get that. I, I, I'll take that land. I don't know. Many people say that Joshua was older than, than Caleb, I, and I, I kind of believe that, but I'm not going to argue that here. But here's what I want to do tell you here. God know what he said, and he know who he said it to. I was talking to Brother Les, and just coming out, I told him, I said, usually you guys have to run out, and, and you have to get some, get, get, uh, you get going and stuff, and I never get to say hi or anything to you like that. And then Ms. Norman said, he got to go to bed. <laughs> you know how these women are today. She said, no, he's got because he got to go to work. He's got to go to bed because he's got to go to work. And I, she didn't know what I was going to talk about tonight. But you know what she just said? Last, you know what she said? <laughs> I was hoping she didn't say that. But here's what she was saying. Even though you may be old and stricken in years, and you said some things to me too during that time. You said, but if I, can, if I can get up in the morning, yeah. if I can just get these old bones to move in one more time, I'll we'll be out there doing the best that I can. And you know what God is saying? All I want you to do is you just get up one more time. If you just get those old bones, come on, older people in here. God is not done with you yet. And don't let anybody tell you that. 
I was telling my wife how I was feeling. And she would say, I don't know how much longer we can go. I decided in my heart, I don't know how much longer I'm going to go, but I'm going to just keep on going. Yeah. Not that God said it, but what God said, but is that God said it. So God is trying to tell us here today. You with me? Because I know you like that part. God still want to use me, Dad. I'm old, right? So God says, I'm tired of your excuses. Let the young people do it. God says, I'm talking to Joshua. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's their turn. God says, I got a turn for them, but not to take your turn. Come on, somebody. So God's trying to help us here today. Those of us that are just feeling like a, there, there's just no more energy left in us. God says, if you will let me use you, I'll find something for you. Next, I've told you that we had a guy named Moses. Moses, God's using him. He's not finished with him. Even when you have, listen now, sinfully gone astray. God's not done with you when you've sinfully gone astray. People are done with you. But God, he didn't get to go to the promised land. Do you know how many more years he still led the children of Israel? Do you and I understand the, 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 the impact and the influence and, and all the other stuff that he had going on in, in, in their lives? Amen. He was, this, by the way, can, can I just do it this way here? Don't you understand God still used a man by the name of David? Amen. You go over there and read how David had sinned with Bathsheba, but God still used him. Amen. Come on, help me, somebody. You understand God in the book of Judges start in 13, he said there was going to be a boy uh, and named Samson means sunny. He wasn't all that sunny and bright. He brought darkness and, and headache to his family's life. But God still used him even though he didn't do all what God told him to do. The Bible said in his death, he killed more Philistines than he did in his life. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say you may have disobeyed, you may have deviated, you may have dishonored God in your life. But if you'll let God use you, yeah. God can use you. Yeah. You say, preacher, where are you getting that stuff from? I read it right there. Amen. Moses was the one who led the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh to their possession. Amen. Moses was the one who did that. So here's what God says. A lot of times people remember. Are you still with me? I remember all of those things about you, but God said, let me tell you what I remember. I remember your labor, too. When everybody's telling you that you are nothing, and you're no, you messed up your life. Remember this, God says, but I see your whole life. Not just a moment in your life. I saw where you struck the road. I saw where you got mad. I saw where you called them stiff neck, and those are my people. I saw where you did all of those things. I even saw where you killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. As a matter of fact, there's some other folks saw you too. That's why, that's why they said, you're going to do the same thing to us? And God is saying, but guess what? If you'll let me, I'll use you. And you know what I'm looking at now? I'm looking to see if you'll labor for me. After all of that stuff you've done. Somebody say amen. amen. Moses, thank you so much for helping us to understand. Understand that God still uses disobedient, defiled, dishonoring Christians if they'll let him. Maybe you've done something in your life and you say, there's no way God will use me. God says, you haven't been reading your Bible. I got a whole lot of them in there like you. A whole lot of them in there. Just just like you. I don't know how you, how you think about it while I'm preaching, but I see God said he got a whole lot of them just like me. He got a whole lot of them who don't deserve it. He got a whole lot of them who haven't lived up to the standards of, of, of somebody else and even God. But let me tell you something here. God still used these people when they surrendered to it. Matter of fact, my Bible says if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to clear the small unrighteousness. Some of us, you remember where we were before we came to the Lord. 
We remember how bad we were when, when we finally found him, and he found us, basically, we can say. And we remember that. Well, aren't you glad that even after you got saved, you still went astray, that you still had an opportunity to come back to him? And he, and he remembers that. He remembers that labor. But he also remembers that reach of your life. Along the way, get me now, I say he remembers the reach of your life. Along the way of your disobedience and your defilement and dishonor of God. There may be somebody you talk to. Told them they need Jesus. And they didn't do like everybody else would say, how, how are you talking to me about Jesus and the life you live? But they say, I know I need him, but I don't know how to get him. And maybe you sat him down and maybe you spoke to him. And maybe you shared with them the great truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they got to say, God don't say, oh no, you shouldn't have done that. You're not worthy. Aren't you glad we got a God that even though we're not worthy, he's still not willing to hear he should perish. And he'll still use that same gospel because the power is in the gospel to save. Amen. Yeah. What are you trying to say, preacher? God remembers that labor and he remembers that life. He remembers the reach of your life in other folks' lives. Oh, yeah, I've not always been standing up preaching. Sometimes you wonder why I even get to stand up and preach if you'd have known some of my life. But he'll tell you the reason why, because I told God, I'll go. I'll go if I had to go by myself. God says, you're simply grown age. You're simply gone astray. Number three, you seemingly have gotten away. What preacher? Balaam. That boy done gone off of the, uh, he, he gone over the cliff. Seems like he just, uh, there's no value to his life. And God said, I want you to understand. Some man came to him and said, hey, uh, if you curse him, I'll give you this. I'll do this for you. And, of course, you know what he did? He, he, he went to God basically say, come on, give me, give me a curse. But he had to go back and say, I can't curse what God can bless. Amen. Come on. So, so think about it. Are you still with me? Amen. Think about it. Here he is. Go to God and say, I'm going to curse him. And God says, no. And he just went back and said, see, I told you. I, I told you. I, you can't just do that. He probably went back like this here. I can't do it. Man. Now I ain't going to get that money. <laughs> Come on. Are you seeing it? Like, he couldn't do it. But, and, he, 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 and he went back. He went back a few times. You know what happened? He had to come back and say, Ain't no way to do it. And just to let you know, he was trying to find a way to curse him. He said, I can't curse him. I'll tell you what you can do. You can give him the sin. All you got to do is bring them pretty girls. <clears throat> Young man, be careful of them pretty girls. You don't believe me? Ask Samson. <laughs> you bring them pretty girls. I tell you what, they'll go astray so quick. That's why he had to die the way he did. But along the way, boy, you know what happened, Conan? God still used him to bless his people. You say, preacher, that just don't sound right. Okay, wait a minute now. There was a guy that preached to a town. And he didn't like them. They say, well, I was growing up. Nam bit to tall. Yet 40 days and then it will be destroyed. He went back and sat down and say, hope it'll happen. You know what? It didn't happen. You read the story. We preached to it. Here's what God is trying to teach you and I. The best thing for us to do is get right with God because what God wants to happen is going to happen whether we want to be a part of it or not. And God may not be through with you. God may still use you to help support those you don't like, give security to those who, of course, you're trying to take it from and bring salvation to an area or to somebody who you just wish they, matter of fact, they said it like this here, if they were on fire, you wouldn't even spit on them. God said, I know how to put fires out from a distance, so don't you even worry about it. Somebody say amen. God's just trying to teach us some stuff here today. What's that, dear God? You ought to want to let me use you instead of make me have to kill you. Because I'll get out of you what I want out of you. 
Have you really looked at that? The Bible said here in verse 22, I told you it wasn't going to be long. Balaam also, the son of Beor and the soothsayer, uh, did the children of Israel fill with all kind of gifts and pleasures and joy. Slay with the sword among them that was slain by them. You want to die like that? You want to, you, you, you want to, you, you want to die pouting? I wanted to do something. God wouldn't let me do it, making me be a good Christian. God says, you ought to want to be because I can kill you as a bad one and still get out of you what I want out of you. So I just want to let you know here tonight for this last guy, God's not finished with you until he said he's done with you. Even when you don't want to do what God wants you to do. Amen. I'd rather be doing what God has. You heard that old saying? I'd rather be in the middle of the will of God. Doing what I don't want to do but what he want to do. Versus being out of the will of God. Doing what I want to do and he don't want me doing it. I look at this life. Most of you, if you've heard anything about Balaam. Listen to me now. Think about the. Legacy he left. What kind of legacy did he leave? Somebody who, of course, God had to almost kill him himself. Remember that old donkey brushing up against the wall? <laughs> if it wasn't for that donkey, you'd be, you'd be gone already. If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace, some of us would be gone already. Look at the legacy he left. God is saying, <clears throat> look, look, at, look at the lack of blessings in his life. Now, what do you want? <clears throat> Barak said, <clears throat> are you with me? Yeah. And this is my last one. I got so much more here to do, I'm not going to try to get, give it to you. But, but he kept telling him, say, I, I'll give you this and I'll give you that. I got all these treasures you can have. <laughs> what did he end up with? That's a slain life. God said, we go after the world because we want to, there's pleasure in sin for a season, but God said, you need to understand something. When I say pleasure for a season, sooner or later, I'm cutting off your season. Why? Because I ain't finished with you yet. And when I do get finished with you, just like when sin gets done with you, you're going to find yourself wishing you had done things the way I wanted you to. God is what God is telling us today. <clears throat> you and I from the last one not being where God wants us to be he's given us a chance to get where he desires for us to be to get back dedicated and devoted to him so he won't have to kill us because he's going to get from you what he wants from you but it ain't going to be as they say hurry I want to be perfect come on somebody and I'll say it again Les. she said you were old and strong. She said, <clears throat> so <clears throat> next time, she wants you to get up and do something. Say, oh, Father, we love you. Thank you so much.